Hello and welcome to the V2016 R1 Enhancement Videos. Today we are going to be looking at automatic lubrication groove creation. This is a typical side core assembly where we would look at putting lubrication grooves onto all the metal to metal surfaces. First we will look at the rail. The lubrication groove builders are held underneath the mould drop down under lubrication grooves. Currently, there are three preformed shapes we can use. Circular or toroidal, linear with a U-shaped cross section, and again linear, but this time with a V-shaped cross section, depending on how you prefer to dress your grinding wheel. On our example, we are first going to use a circular lubrication groove on the rail. To enable me to locate and orientate the lubrication grooves correctly, I'm going to use a face and an application point. I'm using the equidistant point command to enable me to do this. Next I must specify which axes I wish the lubrication grooves to run along. I'm going to pick X. At this point the system gives us a preview of the grooves we are creating as well as opening the dialog box to allow us to change the values. With this I am able to modify the form of the grooves going into the surface using the OD, the depth into the surface, as well as the radius of the section of the rim. You will see that as I'm going, the system is automatically generating me a preview showing exactly what it is that I'm doing to change the form. The next thing we must look at is the amount of grooves that we are placing into the surface. I'm gonna place 13. Then the number of grooves going upwards across the face. I'm gonna place three. You will also see that the system will allow us to change the distance between each one of the rings in the Z and in the X, as well as offset both of the columns and the rows. I now ensure that the automatic subtract is enabled and click the apply button. The system automatically subtracts the solids created from the face, giving us the form required. The feature allows us to quickly and easily create geometry without having to physically draw each individual element and subtract one from the other. Now let's move on to the wear plate where we will look at putting one of the linear lubrication grooves in, this time with the U-shaped cross section. We select the item from the menu below and again we're going to orientate with a face and an application point. The application point in this case is the origin. Once again, we must select an axis from which we are going to reference against. In this case, I'm going to select the X. Again, you'll see the system immediately brings us up a preview of what we're creating. We have the ability to modify the groove width, the length, which I can drag using one of the arrows, just so that the grooves completely encompass the entire job. I'm going to go and pull on the arrow until the lines completely go over the edge of this side here and you'll see that it's automatically filled in the value inside the dialog box. You can see that we have the ability to affect the inclination angle of the groove depending on the dress shape of the wheel, as well as the blend radius. I'm going to go and modify the number of X lines and Y lines so that it completely fills the wear plate. We can also modify the distance between the X lines and the Y lines to give us a tighter or more open grid. Again, I'm going to go and turn on my subtract and add instance. The system again will automatically subtract one body from another to give us the form required. This is a U-shaped section that you may dress on the edge of your wheel to grind in the slots. I'm now going to show you the final lubrication groove form. Again, this is linear, but this time with a V-shaped cross section. I'm going to apply this to the side of our slide, onto this face here. I simply go down and pick from the docked menu at the bottom of the screen. And again, I'm going to orientate using face and application point. I pick the face, then again, I'm going to use equidistant point to pick the center of my form, like so. As before, I must select my reference axes this time you'll see that I must run along Y rather than the X as we have done before. As with the other forms, 
the system generates us a preview of what we've created and gives us a dialog box in which we can start to modify the form. We can modify the groove width. I'm going to change to 0.5. The groove length. Again, I'm just going to drag with the arrow so it's out over the edge. I can also modify the number of X and Y lines so that we get the grid that we require to cover the entire surface. As with the other forms, you can see I can modify the distance between the X and Y lines to modify my grid. I've also got the angle direction, which is reference from my initial reference axes. Again, I have activated subtract and I've also applied and added an instance. You'll see that the form has immediately been created onto the surface. Again, this is the V-shaped cross section. So again, dependent on how you're going to dress your grinding wheel depends on which form you should use. I'm now going to go and activate the rest of the layers so we can see the final effect of what we've created. You can see that very quickly we have created the geometry required for final machining to give us lubrication grooves across all these bearing surfaces. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video.